us begin. It is time. Are we... Yeah? Okay. Hello, Joe. Joe, Joe. Hi. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Today is the feast of Saint Luke. Let me see who knows Saint Luke. Who is Saint Luke? Jacob. The author of one of the Gospels. Okay, good. What's that, Joe? The person who ran naked in the, ag in the garden. <laughs> the one who ran naked from the agony in the garden. <clears throat> well, yeah, they say that that's St. Luke. <clears throat> but St. Luke is also said to be a, a, a doctor and a painter. Okay? Apparently, the, the uh, first images of Our Lady... The very first images, uh, depictions, portrayals of Our Lady was from St. Luke. Okay? Apparently, St. Luke was the first one who uh, depicted Our Lady in uh, paintings. So, that is uh, a very nice contribution of St. Luke um, to us. And if you notice also, St. Luke um, is the one who gives a more detailed description of uh, Jesus' childhood. First, Jesus' birth, okay? And um, the story about um, Jesus' birth and uh, some more detail about his childhood, okay? Because apparently, St. Luke was also very close to Our Lady. Okay? St. Luke was very young. He was very young when, uh, when Jesus started his public life. So he learned many, many things from Our Lady. And so we owe it to St. Luke's narration, to St. Luke's uh, closeness to Our Lady uh, for all the stories um, that we know, for all the things that we know from tradition. That must have originated from Our Lady. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Our Lady must have told him many things, many intimate things about uh, Jesus and about the early life of Jesus and the early life of the Holy Family. So we thank St. Luke today, uh, during his feast day, for all of these beautiful things that uh, he has told us and he has passed on to our, our Catholic faith. Okay, so today, the Gospel is uh, from St. Luke. The Lord Jesus appointed 72 disciples, whom he sent ahead of him in pairs, to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, The harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no money, no money bag, no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. In whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this household. If a peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return to you. Now the gospel continues, but uh, I will stop there. And we will comment on this first part of what, uh, of what the gospel is telling us. Um, <clears throat> first, our Lord sends his 72 disciples in pairs. And he sends them ahead, ahead of him. To go before him. To go before him. It reminds me of St. John the Baptist. Who also went ahead of Jesus. St. John the Baptist was the herald. Who went ahead of Jesus to announce the coming of Jesus. So it looks like uh, that is what apostleship is all about. Our apostleship, our being followers of Jesus. In fact, for us means going ahead of the one we follow. Right? Going ahead of the one we are following. In this case, we are followers of Jesus, but He wants us to go ahead. Ahead of Him. Ahead of Him where? And He says here, He is sending us like lambs among wolves. Lambs. Why lambs? What are lambs about? Hmm? They are very gentle and meek animals. And he's sending them among wolves. Wolves are? 
scary? Okay, fierce, right? Maybe, huh? Creepy. C creepy, okay. <laughs> Strong, okay. So everything that represents something that is maybe, uh, maybe bad, right? And 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 lambs are are supposed to be meek and gentle. Now this is a metaphor that our Lord uses for for the way by which He wants us to approach people when we um, when we do apostolate, when we become apostles for Jesus to others. First, He wants us to go ahead of Him. First, He wants us to prepare the groundworks. For Jesus to come to their souls. First, he wants us to do, to, to do the, the initial tilling of the ground, so to speak. So that he can come later to plant the seed of faith in their souls. Okay? That is what he wants us to do. That's why he's sending us out there ahead of him. To till the ground. To prepare the ground. To prepare the ground that might be hostile. See, hard. That might be uh, rough. And he wants us to go there to soften it, so to speak. That is why the image of a lamb who is meek, who comes to, to a pack of wolves, right? But not in a violent way, not with force, but rather with meekness, with gentleness, with compassion, with mercy. That is the way that our Lord wants us to approach other people. That is the way that our Lord wants us to convert people to to, uh, faith that is how he wants us to bring people back into the fold of Jesus Christ through meekness through compassion through gentleness and not through um, um, violence like like uh, it brings to mind what uh, uh, James and John asked as Jesus a few weeks ago right Oh, this town doesn't want to welcome you Lord let us pray for fire uh, to consume all of these people because they don't want to welcome you. They're antagonistic towards you. Let's burn them all. <laughs> but Jesus said, no, 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 no. That's not the way. See? And he tells us here, in whatever house you enter, first say peace to this household. See? If a person uh, is peaceful, uh, if a peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest on him. Okay? So our Lord tells us, come Come uh, in a peaceful way. Approach people in a peaceful way. And how are we going to do this? How are we going to do this in our everyday lives? What might be the best way to uh, approach people peacefully in order to prepare the ground for Jesus to give these people His grace? What can, what can we do? What can we do? What would be the best way? You have no suggestions? I have a few suggestions. The first thing we need to do is to pray. Pray. That's always the first thing we need to do. If we if we find people that we need to uh, that might that we think might need conversion, that we think might need uh, the grace of God for one reason or another, uh, if we think we we find people who might need to see the light and and get enlightened by the Holy Spirit in order to be able to receive the grace that God wants to give them, the first effort we need to do is to pray. Okay? Pray. Prayer is always the, 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 uh, the, the great uh, softener, so to speak, okay? that will soften hearts, that will help people, uh, that will open the eyes of people and make them see the light. Next thing we need to do is to give good example. Good example. That's always the kind of soft landing that we can make among souls and among people. Give good example. Let us be the lamp that our Lord also spoke about in the gospel. The lamp that we don't hide under the bush. If we are really a lighted lamp, see, we can shine among our environments, among people, but we need to display it. That lamp needs to be displayed on a table not hidden under the table. See? That is the kind of example. We have to shine. We have to give forth uh, uh, the brightness that comes from Jesus Christ, not from our own excellence. See? It is actually the, the shining example we give actually comes from the grace that God has put in our souls. 
So it's also the grace of God that we are, um, we are uh, dispensing among people. So good example is always um, the second thing we need to do. And then the third thing, and only very much in the third part of this uh, approach, would be our words. Our words of compassion, our words of gentleness, our words of reproach sometimes. But even that reproach can be done in a mild and gentle way. Okay, never in a, in a very violent uh, way. So that is the way that we're going to be lambs among wolves and uh, go ahead of Jesus Christ in, uh, in converting souls. And let, let's just put this very much in perspective, right? We in these past days have been going to the abortion clinic. Right uh, here in here locally in in Modesto we have an abortion clinic where we uh, where we pray and we go there every day, uh, but um, a few days during the week we really get down and stop by and pray a decade of the rosary at least for our family. That's what we do. And uh, why are we doing that? See, we want to convert these people, but our approach will never be one of violence. We're not going to all of a sudden storm that clinic and burn it down. No, the approach is through prayer. That's why we go there to pray. We go there to pray for them. We go there to show them the good example uh, that, uh, that hopefully they see. That's why I, I bring all my six kids. Right? What better example can you give to people than, than families with, that, are, that have many kids? So, so I bring all my six kids in, in the abortion clinic and uh, show them. That, uh, yes, having six kids and more is very possible, even here in the United States of America, where life is uh, uh, said to be uh, tough and difficult. No, it is possible to have plenty of kids. Abortion is not necessary. So we are giving a very good testimony by us, all uh, six of you, joining us in prayer in the abortion clinic. And number three, talking to them. Like, remember how uh, the administrator of the clinic came out? Uh, well, was it this week? No, last week, right? She wanted to shoo us away. She wanted to get rid of us. But then, well, with a little gentle talk, with a little peaceful approach, we tried to explain to her that uh, we're just here to pray for them and that hopefully they might see the light one of these days and realize that uh, what they're doing is wrong. Okay? And we can continue to do that, and we will continue to do that, and you know, hopefully people see the light. But you know, we don't only have to be uh, advocates of these big things, eh? of these big evils that we need to fight in the world. No, you have friends. You have people around you that you can influence every day. In fact, you should also be an apostle to your own brothers and sisters here at home every day. Right? Do you pray for each other? Do you pray that your brother or your sister who might be having a difficult time trying to uh, correct a bad habit or a, a vice, are you praying for him or her so that him or her could correct his ways? So that he or she could correct his ways? See, that is being an apostle. See? First, you need to pray. Then you need to give good example to your own brothers and sisters. See? You have to give good example to your own brothers and sisters. So you, you will be and can be an apostle right here at home. And then thirdly, you correct your brothers and sisters. Okay? With peace, peacefully, in a gentle way. That is the way to become an apostle. So you can be an apostle at home, among your own brothers and sisters, among your parents, your children, anybody at home. And then you go out into, into the world, into your own workplace, into, into your church environment, into your uh, uh, social uh, communities and obligations. You can be an apostle of Jesus Christ everywhere and anywhere you are with these approaches. First, you pray for the people you encounter every day. Second, you give good example. And third, when you are able, open your mouth and talk. Talk. Then, uh, uh, number four, by the way, is let Jesus do what he 
can do for souls. Remember that it is not us who will convert people. It is not us and not our good works, not our good example that uh, will finally uh, give people the push over the edge of conversion or faith. It is not us. It is Jesus Christ. We are just being sent ahead of Jesus to prepare the ground for him to later on plant the seed of faith, plant the seed of conversion, or trim trim a tree, trim a soul, and make it grow, or fertilize it. Right? We are just instruments. We are just the ones that Jesus sends ahead of him. Then he will do the rest of the work. The Holy Spirit is going to do the rest of the work. Okay? And, you know, again, we are still in the month of October. Let's use our weapon. What is our weapon to pray for people? The rosary. The rosary. Very good. Let us use our weapon very often. Let us use our weapon many times, many times during this month of October in order to pray for everybody we need to pray for. Okay? Hey, Grandpa Jacob just joined us. Hello, Grandpa. Want to greet Grandpa? He's on the go. <laughs> oh, by the way, you know, it's also the birthday of Grandpa uh, Francisco, Fra um, uh, Francisco Leasing. I will also greet him happy birthday if he sees this video, okay? Happy, happy birthday, birthday, grandpa boy. Okay. If you're watching, okay, well, we are off to Mass, ladies and gentlemen, folks. Let's go for Mass now. Let's end breakfast and we're off. Bye! Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> See you hopefully tomorrow. Yesterday, I apologize. We couldn't make, uh, make it to uh, the breakfast uh, call yesterday. We had to send off Liam. Liam is now in China. He's uh, safely back in China. He just sent us a message this morning saying he got home safely. But yesterday we had to send him off so we couldn't quite make it to uh, the morning breakfast uh, gospel reading. So anyway, see you tomorrow. God willing. Bye-bye. Have a good day, everybody. Bye. Bye. <laughs>